house of the Lord one more time. Amen. If I ready to start our morning devotion, we ask that everyone will lift up their voices and that same praises to our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I need a little help this morning. you to help me
shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is the keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thee from thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And I will want to read Psalms 122 while you see it there. Just the first verse. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Make it be a blessing to the readers and do us of God holding righteous word. Let us pray. Father, I come just as I am, Lord. Lord, I come asking you, Lord, forgive me for my sins and my trespasses, Lord. Lord, I done said a lot of things and I did a lot of things this week, Lord. Lord, I repent for my sins and my trespasses. That's why I've sung this song, Lord. I want you to help me, Lord. When these trials and tribulations come in my life, Father God, Oh, Lord, let me count them all joy. Father, let me be slow to speak on some things, Lord. I shouldn't say anything to, Lord. Let me be slow to anger, Father. Let me be slow to rap. Please, God, I, I just called upon your name asking you to help me, Lord. Oh, so many situations I be in, Father, and I know, Lord, you said let your light so shine, Father, that people may see Christ and glorify your holy and righteous name. Father, so many times I have fell short. But Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. In my deepest sin, Lord, you forgave me, Father. Lord, you look beyond my fault and saw our need, Father. I thank you and I praise your holy and righteous name today. Lord, you're good to me, Lord. You're better than me than I am myself. Lord, forgive me, Lord, for my sin. Not only me, Lord. Well, you got some peoples in here, Lord. You got some people in here, Lord, and did a lot of sinful things, Lord. Lord, so we come, Lord, asking you, Lord, forgive us, Father. Lord, make us better, Lord, to do your holy and righteous will. We say we're going to do better, Lord. But, Lord, we need you to lead us. We need you to guide us. We need you to keep us, Lord. Yeah, your word says, Lord, you already preserve us, Father God. Oh, Lord, make us believe that, Jesus Christ. Because you are the author and the finish of our faith, Father. Lord, I ask you, Lord, Lord, bless the sick. Bless the shut-in, Lord. Bless the bereaved, Father. Lord, I call upon your hold and wretched name, Lord, because we all standing in the need of prayer. Lord, we all going through something, Lord. I don't know what someone else going through, Lord. 
but I know what I'm going through. But I know, Lord, that you are able to see me through, Lord, because the reason I know, Lord, because, because your word told me, Lord, because, Lord, it's for you that have never forsake me. You have never left me, Lord. It is you that stick closer to me than a brother. But, Lord, what a friend I have in my Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for loving me in spite of myself, Father. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to bless Minister Ice and his teach your holy and righteous word, Lord. Comfort him with your spirit today, Lord. Lord, I'm glad, Lord, that I know I'm glad what your word said, Lord. I was glad when they said they come to the church, Lord. Why I'm so glad and why I'm so happy, Lord, because I know I'm going to get some help right now, Lord. Oh, fill us with your spirit, Father. Touch us, Lord. Touch our mind. Touch our heart, Lord. Make us do according to your holy and righteous will. Lord, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I, even in spite of myself, Lord, you love me, Lord. The reason I love you so much, Lord, because you saved my soul. Oh, you gave me salvation, Lord. You gave me a heart, Lord. I had a heart of stone, Father, but you didn't gave me a heart of the flesh, Father. And I want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you do, God. Oh, you're so good and you're so mighty, Father. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Oh, soon and very soon, Lord, we're going up a yonder, Lord. Going up the yonder to be with my king. I'm going up the yonder to be with the redeemer of my soul. Oh, Lord, I'm coming to see my father, Lord. And I know you're going to say, serving well done. Cecil, you've been faithful over a fruit thing. Many times I done fell short, but Lord, you continue to keep me, Lord. Lord, I need you, Lord. Yes, because I'm going up a yonder. Hey, anybody ask you? Where I'm going. I'm going to be my Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, it seems like it won't be long, Lord. This might be my last prayer, Lord. This might be my last time talking to you in, down here on this earth. But when I see you, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to say worthy is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. I thank you, God. Thank you for all your blessings. Keep us, Lord. And let us worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth. Let us worship you like we never worshiped you before, Lord. Yes, because you are worthy of all the praise. This is my son and your Savior, Jesus. I do pray, Lord. Thank you for saving our soul. Thank you for all you do, Lord. In your son, Jesus, I pray, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Bible said the saints can't have a good time in church. They lying. Yeah, yeah. Come to God's house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To celebrate Christ. Celebrate. And when you know that you are available to Christ, yes, sir. that he has made you available, oh, yeah. you won't mind celebrating Christ. Oh, yeah. As the Lord is preparing us to hear the word of God, yeah. join with me in saying, God bless. God bless. Minister Isa. God bless. Minister Isa. God bless. Minister Isa. Let's lift up our voices. Let's sing about our availability to the Lord. running in this book. You all better keep up with me. Because the truth is in it, and it's in me, and it'll soon be in you. I'll be coming out of the King, New King James Version, so it's all the same. It's true. And it reads, 
Verse 4, chapter 9, Deuteronomy. Do not think in your heart. Come on, come on. After the Lord your God has cast them out from before you. Uh -huh. Or I should say before you. Saying, because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. But it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out from before you. My brothers and sisters, what we have here today is Moses schooling the new generation of the Israelites. You can say part two of the wilderness. Because what was first was disobedient and unbelieving in God. But this morning I'm here to tell you that the provision of the Lord All right. will still be done All right. in the sins of us who are trying to provoke him. In other words, God going to get done what he wants done, regardless if you want to do it or not. Righteousness. Paul reminds us in Romans. Yes, sir. There's none righteous, no, not one. When you have this thing in your mind that it is your righteousness that is allow God to let you possess the land there's no righteous in you and see this is what was going on in the first part of Exodus as they enter into the wilderness you see righteousness is something that's of the Lord when you do something, it is not your righteousness, but it is the right thing to do. Yeah, all right, all right. In your obedience and faith in the Lord. All right. In the first wilderness episode, uh -huh. we find Israel going into the wilderness, and this wilderness was all uh, Mount. Horror, or uh, Sinai, uh -huh. and they were on their way from being rescued out of Egypt uh -huh. by the Lord, our God. And the thing about it, they knew it was the Lord who rescued them out of Egypt. They seen the miraculous work of the Lord. Uh -huh. And they seen what happened through the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah. And here we are in the wilderness. Yeah. And the Lord did it as a blessing and a favor for Abraham. Yeah. This was not nothing that he was just doing for Israel, but he had made a promise to Abraham in chapter 12 of Genesis. Mm -hmm. And this is very important that this promise was fulfilled because it also involved us. Yeah. You know, yes, sir. it involved us, yes, and it had to be done, yes, and it was done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I said what God wants done, it's going to get done regardless of how we feel. That's right. That's right. But here we are. <laughs> Moses schooling the young generation of what not to do. <laughs> he tells them. It is not your righteousness, young blood. But at the same time, it is because of the wickedness of these nations that God goes in and give you this land. And let me tell you how God did it. Go ahead, go ahead. You see, in chapter 9, verse 1, God gave Moses the orders uh -huh. to go ahead and rally the troops. Come on. All right, all right. Yeah. God gave him that information. Uh -huh. 
He said, tell the Israel, you ought to cross over to the Jordan today and go in to depossess the nations. Uh, th th those who are greater and mightier than you. I'm going to pause right there because I need to stop and let you know how I got to be those who are greater and mightier than you. You see, the first time around, before the second time around, these were the march orders to go ahead and do this. I didn't bring you here for nothing. Just walk around complaining all the time and Amen. Amen. stuff that doesn't matter to me, God. Right. This is God talking, not me, but me, God. Right. Your whining does not excite me. <laughs> Your complaining does not excite me. I know what I brought you here for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, grumbling and fussing and, it, and all this craziness you may do this every day. But when will you ever find a time to listen to what I'm telling you that matters to me? And what matters to me is what's going to bless you. We're going to the promised land. And I want 12 spies to go up and give me some observation of the land. Well, they got 12 spies. All right. With 10 of them lying. Yeah. Come on. And this 10, and this lie that was reported back to God, to Moses, God already knew. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. He knew. Uh -huh. They gonna tell Moses, man, them green, them giants up there, yeah. they're gonna kill us. We can't, we, we can't, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. And then he looked over at his cousins and said, Joshua, Caleb, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because they saying the report is not true. Well, yeah, it was giants in the land, but if God sent us, yes, sir. Yes. who can we fear? Right. He gonna brought us this far. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. But the majority rules. And God, <laughs> you see, this was all a test, my brothers and sisters. Yes, he did. wanted to test and see what kind of people right. do we have in this group. Well, I got two that's faithful, beside my Moses. All these other ones, they got some real issues. And so, at this point, God tells them, you know, since you want to call me a liar and say that I cannot provide, that I got you out here to trap you so you can die out here. I give you what you want. You know, I'm going to forgive you, but you ain't going to make it this far. You know, because I had plans for you, but you would not be the one that go through these plans. To go, you know, you're not going to be able to step a land in the, in the promised land. You know, you're scared of something. That's not real. You know, you believe me, not what you see. Amen. So your faith is in your sight. Amen. But I'm right here. Not what you see. God, who created all these things yeah. in you, yeah. you know, yeah. telling me that I brought you here to die. <laughs> I deceived you all, you should have stayed in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. There's something about that Egypt. There's something about the Egypt. But anyway. Go ahead, go ahead. They died. Uh -huh. God cursed them. And those who were 20 and above, All right. they had to go. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. They had to go. They died. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They died. All right. But Moses went even deeper. He said, It is because of God that this promise was made for your forefathers. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
it's not because of your righteousness that you're going into this land. It is not because of your righteousness. Because you are a stiff-necked people. That's what he's saying. And because you are a stiff-necked people, I need to let you know what you can't do this go around. Because I'm not going that with you this time. This is where this is it for me. But I'm going to lead you to a new commander, and he's going to take charge. And please. Do not give him the headaches that your ancestors gave me. Right. You know. This is why I'm not going in, because of them, you know. But at the same time, what he's telling them at this point, is obey the law of God. You see, it was because of you, your ancestors, when they were freed from the land of Egypt. And Cain also to this place. They have all been rebellious against the Lord God. All right. All right. This is what's been going on All right. before you. And at the same time, because of that, mm. when they was in horror, they also provoked the Lord to wrath mm. until the Lord wanted to kill them or destroy them. But he didn't. Ah, all right. And when I went up into the mountain <laughs> to receive the tablets, Boy, uh, the tablets of the covenant, all right. which the Lord made with you, mm -hmm. then I was there on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. I need a drink water. Mm -hmm. Well, I need a drink, a bread or drink water. <laughs> then the Lord gave to me, or delivered to me, two tablets of stones. That's right. Ah, that's written with the finger of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on them were all the words which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain, from the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. You see, while I was up there feet, uh, fasting before the Lord those 40 days, the Lord told me to arise. All right. mm -hmm. Go down quickly from here for your people whom you brought out of Egypt mm -hmm. have acted correctly. Mm -hmm. They have quickly Turn aside from the way tell it, tell it. that I commanded them. Tell it. They have made themselves a molded image. Man. All right, tell it. Yes, sir. I can imagine how Moses was feeling. Forty days. I've been laying down here feet, you know, fasting. These fools down here feasting. And so he furthermore spoke to Moses saying, I have seen these stiff dead people. And indeed, and indeed they are. A stiff necked people. Yes, sir. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me alone. Ah. That I may destroy them. Ah. And block out their name. Ah. From under heaven. And Moses. Yep, I will make of you a nation mm. mightier and greater than them. Mm. My brothers and sisters, this was a moment that was most important for all of us in here because Moses could have easily said, you got my attention. Mm. You know, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, they need to die, you know. Oh, come on, come on, come on, Master. Moses could have said that, All you know. Right. Hey. Hey. But then again, God could have been testing him also. All right. <laughs> All right. So Moses said, God, let us, let us continue. I mean, you know. Pray for him, yes sir. Let me do what I got to do, All you right. know. All right. And so Moses turned aside came down from the mountain, mm -hmm. and behold, 
Well, he looked and behold, what he saw was crazy. Israel sinning <laughs> against the Lord. All right, Lord. They had made themselves a motor calf. <laughs> they had turned aside quickly from what God, from the way God had commanded them not to. Yeah, yeah, sir. So he took the two tablets of covenant. All right. Yeah. And he broke them. Yeah. Jeez. Well, he threw them from his two hands and broke them in front of their eyes. Ah. Moses fell on the ground. Mm. As at the first 40 days and 40 nights before God. Mm -hmm. And he ate the bread. He did not eat the bread and he did not drink the water because of the sins which they had committed. Mm -hmm. Enduring in the presence of the Lord. All right. uh -huh. See, he was afraid, my brothers and sisters, All right. of the anger and hot displeasure which God was angry with Israel uh -huh. to have destroyed them. Uh -huh. And because of that, God listened to Abraham at that time also. And he was also mad at Aaron, very mad at Aaron, and could have destroyed him. Because Aaron was the one who was left in charge while Moses was in the mountain doing what he had to do. So that's what that goes. You have to be careful who you leave in charge because, you know. When he prayed for him also, then he took the sins of Israel the motor calf which they had made and he burned it with fire mm. and he crushed it crushed. Yeah. Yeah. and he grinded it mm -hmm. as fine as dust yeah. and this chapter said he uh, threw the dust particles in the brook to sit in front of the sea but in this he made them drink that stuff and a lot of them got sick and died from it yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, when I'm saying here today, before you, you might think in your own personal lives, because the lesson right here, God's gonna have his way. There's nothing you can do about it. You see, every one of us has had a giant in our eye. Sometime in our life. You know, on a continuous basis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And because that giant is in our eye, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we sit down for 40 years and just let it just be comfortable and just being dysfunctioning in it. Come on, come on, come on, man, sir. You see, our problem is we stay out of our faith too much. We play with this idea of being saved. We play with it. You see, when you go on somewhere that you ain't got no business going, and then you're messing up before the eyes of the Lord. You know, God don't need us, but we need him. And he gave us his grace. And this is the thanks that he gets in return. We don't need to be playing tit-tat with God. Stay in your face, my brothers and sisters. That's the only way we're going to be able to do this rightly. Our righteous come from the spirit life in Christ Jesus. That's what we're right at. But outside the faith of Jesus, we are subject to do anything because we're not strong enough and capable of being out the faith of Jesus. When we are living this life and find ourselves wondering because of this giant that we see among us. We don't think, we don't fear. The word tells us. We don't think about the temptations and get overwhelmed with it. The temptation is just that. When we fear temptation, we are doing exactly what God don't want. We fear God. Right. We fear God. That's the bottom line. We don't fear no temptation. When we fear temptation, we're bowing down to it and saying, you are my Lord. Come 
That's what we're doing. That's what this passage told us, that we're bowing down to stuff that doesn't even matter. Amen. And when we do these things, we show God how weak we are. That's why we don't get blessed when we always calling on his name. Because when you call on his name, if things don't happen the way you want it to, you doubt them. And you turn to temptation. You turn to temptation and do the things that the world wants you to do outside what God wants you to do. God just wants you to wait and be patient. He heard your prayer. He heard your cry. Just ask your husband for them, David. Why did he hear they cry? And he hear your cry just because he don't drop Stains on your on you at the same time that you asking for just because you think he don't hear you praying just because you don't think he believes just because you don't think he listen you ain't gonna get nowhere with God with that nowhere deaf ear I can't hear you you don't believe me and you said because of your righteousness get out of here with that I do things because I want to do things and if I tell you to do things you're gonna do things but at the same time I'm not gonna compete with you in temptation you know, you either you in or you out. All right. Let your false God help you. <laughs> but you'll be crawling back to me when I'm ready for you to crawl back to me. That's how powerful I am. At the same time, my brothers and sisters, what I'm saying, there comes a time when you got to use faith. Yeah. And faith is the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. It's the word that tells you where you at? Yeah. This is where I. At. This is what God is telling me. This is what's for real. Mm-hmm. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. Think about it. First Corinthians ten thirteen tell us we are not over power with temptation. All right. Except that. It's coming as in man. Mm-hmm. Man can believe in that stuff. But if you're a child of God, All right. All right. we know. Mm-hmm. By faith, faith. God will not have us to overcome uh, or let temptation overtake us because of what we're able to give up. Because what we're able, you know, He he know where we're at. He know where we're at. But with the temptations, my brothers and sisters, what God will do, He will make the way of escape. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you can bear it. But let me tell you something. You see. Come you on. see, I'm not through. When he gives you the way to escape, all right. yeah, he ain't gonna do it for you. Ah. You got to go through that. <laughs> now you're praying for a way to escape. I got you a way out. <laughs> now you want me to go out for you? You know, you can't do that. I'm not your slave. You, you my I'm your master. You know, your master has gave you a way to escape. But I tell you what, you better take your tail on through that because what that escape does is give you a testimony. A testimony. Look what God has done for me. Look what He's done for me. I prayed. He paid attention. She gave me a way up. And here I am. I'm all right. I'm all, I ain't afraid of nobody. But God, you know, why am I afraid of God? You don't want to mess with God. You know, you don't want to mess with God. He will destroy you. Don't play with God. You know, your day is coming, but don't let it come by way of destruction. You know, but at the same time, when we are here, we are here because God is allowing us to live the life in which he already created for us, you know, and in that life is a good and abundant life, more than what you see in the world. Let me tell you something about the world. That green giant come from the world. Okay. And that's a hymn that tells us when you are tempted like that, you have temptation in your life. Right. You leave the life of temptation and come to the life of God. Yes, sir. And watch the temptation of the world start dimming before you. All right. As the word of Jesus Christ 
continues to power you to where you need to be. All right. That's how that works. Stay out of what you don't need to be in, my brothers and sisters. Because when, when you allow yourself to be caught up in the world like that, you're going to have problems. Problems, big problems. I have problems. You have problems. But the Bible tells us it don't have to be that way. Trust in the Lord. Don't worry about when it's going to happen. You see, even before it happened, God will give you perfect peace, peace understanding. Yeah, mercy. In your heart, in your mind, in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. That's right. Sit down and just relax. That's right. God's gonna work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is worked out because of God. Right. The world, you're gonna have to pay. You have to pay for it. You have to pay big time for it because the world ain't giving you nothing free. All right. You're gonna pay. Yeah. You're gonna pay. Yeah. You can be in a in a casket, they still gonna come and see if you did. Just to make sure how much that casket worth, how much that ring on it. You gonna pay. It wants everything. It has no respect for you. Anything of God, the world has no respect for my brothers and sisters. That's why Israel had to die in episode one. They had no respect for him. God said, what kind of people is this? I'm not releasing them into my world or my promised land with this attitude. And it's still this way today. But you know what happened? Christ happened. God made his provisions be known. And because of that, he was able to push these agendas that he had and we got Christ on the cross and he gave us exactly what we needed. He gave us, God gave us the grace, Christ gave us the faith, and now we have an abundant life. Thanks be to Jesus Christ. We are people of God. We are not of this world. We are not of this world. Things are going to happen, my brothers and sisters, in the near future, right here before your church. And you got to be ready. You don't have no time to think and say, well, let me see if I got the time to think. Things are going to happen because God wants them to happen. And when it happens, you don't have no faith. Don't come up here talking about my righteousness got this done. You might get thrown up out of here. Because when God calls, he's going to call in a mighty way. And we're going to answer that call. We're going to be diligent. We're going to just do what we got to do. It may be hard, but God don't care. If God sends you to do anything, he's going to give you what you need. You tired. What you doing tired? You don't need to be tired. I got you. Go ahead and drink some water. Go ahead and eat some bread. I got you. You know, go by my lights. I got you. You don't say stupid stuff when it comes before God calling you. He's gonna take care of it. This is my last dollar, so you know, give it up. You know, he don't care about those things. How faithful are you to God? He wants you to be faithful to Him. Just be obedient in that faith, and everything else will follow, my brothers and sisters. You don't have to worry about things that the world worries about because when the world gives stuff up. They know they might not get it back. Right. But when we give stuff up, so God's going to bless me. He's going to bless me. You got to really believe that. Don't doubt it. Boy, I say he's going to bless me, but I ain't got nothing. To fit. Let me tell you something stupid. Back in the day when the prayer clause was in effect. People believed in the prayer clause. People had faith in the prayer clause. They gave all their little pennies up. They gave it all up. And they prayed the most silly thing in the world. Ah. It is to me now because the Bible tells my mom, you, you pray hard enough. You know. But at the same time, <laughs> you're praying at an idol. Come out of the world. That's the pimp that got the money, all the Rolls Royces, all the rings, all the mansions, the freedom Raiders got nothing. Ah. But we praying. We praying. That's right. The same thing happened to the day, y'all. Same thing that happened to the day. But when God calls us, and he's going to be calling us pretty soon, don't you give up on God. Because a mighty good thing is getting ready to happen right here at your yeah. church. Amen. A mighty good thing. Yes, sir. Good thing. I seen the promised land right. before my own eyes. All right. And it's going to take help. All but right. the thing about it, my brothers and sisters, just right. like the second generation of the wilderness, we got to get ready for the next generation of this church. Right. We got to get ready for it. We're not going to be here. 
We're not going to hell, but at the same time, we're going. And when we leave, they got to have a place to worship. They got to have a place better than what we got to worship. And I seen the, uh, the vision, and the vision is beautiful. And you will see it too. But when God comes to you, not pastor, but God, you know, because this is God's vision. He's just a being pastor. And we're just a being followers. And we're going to make it happen. Yeah. I seen it. I read it and I prayed on it and I want to be a part of it. Thank you, Lord. You know, I want to be a part of it. Yeah. So when God comes to you, don't turn your back. Yeah. You know, That's right. this is our promised land, believe That's it or not. Right. This is our promised land. That's That's right. our, now, before I leave you, I want to leave you with a couple of things because right here, they did. Received the promised land. They did. The children received it. But let me tell you what happened. God gave them three things. He gave them the hope of knowing that he was the consuming fire that would go in before them. And then when he went into the promised land before them, what God did, and before, it's just that. He went in before them as a consuming fire. Then what God did, he destroyed them. Then he brought them down before them. Yeah. And what them had to do, they had to go in and drive them out yes, sir. and destroy them quickly as God had said to them. Mm -hmm. That's how that worked. He gave them three great things. What I'm telling you, God is gonna make a way for All friendship. Right. And we're gonna come in. And do what he got to do. All right. That he told us to do. All right. And then we're gonna do it quickly, mm -hmm. so we can get back to session in our loving worship place. All right. All right now. We're not giving up on COVID. All right. We're not looking at the bad days ahead of us. Yeah. We're looking at the things that God is showing us that, hey, this is just a camouflage. But underneath the camouflage, look under there and see everything's all right. You know, if you got faith in me, keep on living. If you don't, die. You know, it's the same way he told them in the wilderness. I don't have to prove nothing to you. I am God. But at the same time, you don't believe me. It's just that. You know, we don't doubt God for nothing because he has been good to us here at Friendship. Right. You know, right. and the beauty of it all, no matter if you're sick or what you're going through at home, God know that. Jesus. But you just want to know how beautiful you are in your faith. Jesus. Sister, I know you're sick. Uh -huh. Sister, I know you ain't got that much. Brother, I know you're trying to find a job and, you know, I don't care. I want your labor. And when you do that, show God how faithful you are. Watch him show up in a mighty way. I know what I'm talking about, been there and done that. You know, but at the same time, you all know that too. You know? So, my final verse to you all this morning comes out of Proverbs 21 31. And it tells us that the horse may be rather. Maybe getting ready for the battle of the day. This is what's going on. The horse is getting ready to go out to battle for the day. But the deliverance, the deliverance is in the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all just gotta show up. That's it. Uh -huh. And he will do the rest. He will. Yes, he will. Stand back and watch he the salvation will. of the Lord. Yes, he will. And Mr. Standing back, will. sing a song. Yes, Let him know how much you appreciate yes, sir. what he's doing in your life. Yes, sir. What he's doing for his church. What he's doing for this world, for those of us that believe that he is God and he's capable of doing everything yes, that he said he is. My brothers and sisters, I just love, I just love, I just love how the word presents itself to me. Now I know I talk fast. But look here, I'm just excited, man. You know, I'm excited because what God has done for me. Come on. Before I came to this church, me too. Before I came to this church, it was nothing like this. All right. You know, it doesn't take long to get transformed from the world. Say that. Say that. If you believe. Yes, sir. The word is powerful. Yes, sir. And I believe in this passage. I believe it, and I believe in friendship, vision as well. Amen. So I leave you on that note. The horse is ready for today's battle. All right now. For deliverance is in the Lord. Amen. 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 It's a music ministry.
blesses us with the selection. The Lord is drawing you. Come forth.
Sorry.